praise at all times for all things. Amen. Is he good? Amen. We serve a great God. Amen. Awesome God. Amen. A mighty God. A holy God. A worthy God. He is worthy. As the prophetic song just went forth, he is worthy. He is worthy. Um, I want to, uh, Lord gave me something. I want to see where we go with it. But, um, question is, as, we, as I had been talking about uh, the past, the, the last time I was up, we were talking about the sea and where is your relationship? Where do you stand uh, in the kingdom? Where you stand uh, with your relationship with God? And we went through that uh, extensively. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to ask the question today: If you were to, if someone was to ask you, uh, does God have your all? What would your answer be? So that's what I want to talk today about: Does God have your all? Does God have your all? Does he have your all? Think about that for a moment. Does God have all of you? What does it mean? What is the definition of all mean? I ask the kids. What does all mean? What is all? All of it. Okay. All of it. What is all? Okay, everything. Does he have all? Does God have all of you? Um, I have a definition here as well. It says used to refer to the whole quantity or extent of a particular thing. So, it's everything. Does God have all of you? Think about that. Does he have all of you? Does God have all? How would one, how would you determine that God has all of you? How does one, how does one determine that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, let me, let me get into this because we, um, that it won't be a struggle to do the things for God. Okay. And we won't contemplate it and wrestle with it that we'll just do it. Okay. Not a struggle. Anyone else? How do you determine? How does one know God has all? Um, First determining is um, in order to even be able to uh, ask that question to yourself, um, you first have to have a, a relationship with them. You know, um, you have to have a relationship with them. You have, have to actually know them and follow them, and then you have to be honest with yourself because we have several areas in our life. We have to be honest. It's like, okay, um, I remember you brought up you you brought a, a word some years back. Well, it was actually a word that I brought, um, but you responded on it, and it was regarding to um, the Porter message. Mm. And I remember when I was bringing that message, you responded and brought up with um, the the secret spots. Mm -hmm. Is the Lord able to go in your secret closets, your secret hidden rooms, and be able to be transparent in that? Have you allowed him access to every area and allowed him to take over yeah. that area? Yeah. That's how you know that you gave God your all. When God has access to you entirely, Yeah. Not he's not restricted, oh, there's a lock on this door, or oh, you can't go in there. You know, if the Lord is able to go inside of your whole temple, which is your body, 
then you know that you've given God your all. <laughs> all right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That that uh, that, that room was uh, what we refer to as as the junk room, where we were just talking about this a couple weeks ago too, where you have company. Some people have company over, and it's that one room in the house. That company really has access everywhere. Some in, in this particular visit, except for one room, and so you can go anywhere, but there. Don't go in there. And somebody may mistake that door for the bathroom, and the, the, the host of the house says, no, 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 not, not that. <laughs> not there. Not there. They will stop them before they turn, put their hand on that uh, door knob, before they turn it. Because they do not want the guests to see what's on the other side of that door. And most, some people will just push a whole lot of uh, things into uh, the room so that no one sees the closed door, no one got to see the mess that's behind that door. Does he has complete access to your life? Or is there some things, do you have a spiritual jump room? Some people like to uh, hide snacks in their house. My mother used to hide the good stuff from us. It was the different, the, the, the premier chocolates. <laughs> she would hide them. She would give us the, the, the basic stuff, but she would have the good stuff in her room. I'm talking about to, the good stuff. To me, it was back in the Milky Way. You know, we would have the off-brand thing. There was all kind of Name brand chocolate she would hide to have for herself. But guess what? We, we wanted them and we would find them. And then, <laughs> so we would seek them out, open the pack sometime, take what we, you know, so one of us would then take one, and then another one would come in to find and take one. And so we would, well, let me just tell you what I would do. I would get, <laughs> I would get crafty. And so I would make it seem like my other siblings was the ones that took it. So they wouldn't even know I took it. So, uh, but when it came down to it, everybody would get questioned and possibly get in trouble. But it was, it was the, the caramel was worth the risk. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, I said it to say, some people hide things. They hide things from, from other people that live with them so that they can enjoy it. And on the spiritual side, are are you trying to hide things from God? Like put things where you hope that He won't find it, which we all know that He sees and knows everything, so there's nothing we can hide from God. But Lord, you can have, go back to that house in that jungle, Lord, you can have all of this except that. I want to hold on to that for a while. Because that brings me pleasure. We're going to talk about the, the, the chocolate. It brings me pleasure. So, in the middle of the night, when I want to wake up and reach for it, I can, it's to my access, right there to my access, and it brings me pleasure. That's what a lot of people do too. They have to put snacks and stuff in their room, by the bed and stuff, so they get a hankering for a snack in the middle of the night. They will. Reach for that snack in the middle of the night, eat it, drink some water, we're going to go back to sleep. Uh, it's not the most healthiest thing to do, have snacks hidden in your room, but uh, some people do it. Um, so, does God have access to everything? Or is there a piece, there are pieces of things that he don't have access to? Lord, you can have all of this, but this I want to hold on to. Now, do we say that? Do we say that? Like flat out say that? Lord, you can have all of this of me, but this I want to hold on to. Is that something that we vocalize? Don't um, usually 
will combine two. But um, he sees our hearts. He knows the intentions of our hearts. He knows the motives. So um, he can see deep down into our um, actions and without even us saying it, he knows. But just like David says, search me, O God. And uh, my innermost being and see what my intentions are. So he knows. No matter how we try to hide it, the intention matters. Are we doing it for God? Or are we doing it to be recognized or to be noticed or to get fame and stuff like that? So intention matters a lot. Yes, yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. He knows our heart and our intentions. Amen. So let's, um, let's revisit Quickly, um, Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. You know that's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, and when when it when it talks about the oddness, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and the Lord is the Lord of um, he's he's the Lord of fairness. Mm -hmm. he, he wants things things to be fair. Mm -hmm. The Lord is able to give us exceedingly above all, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He wants us to do the same thing. right? So Abel <laughs> picks the best of the best that he has to offer, basically, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and brings it to God. God accepts it, he loves it. Why does he love what Abel gave? It's because Abel gave the best of what he had available to him. And this is the thing. Everybody in here has the best of something inside of them. Mm, that's a good point. Everybody in here is their own individual ground. Mm -hmm. And you all have your own individual fruit. And when you bring that to God and it's the best, he accepts it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that Cain tried to do Cain came from a worldly stand view with God when he wanted to bring something and present it to God because he didn't give him the best. He said, "Oh, well, whatever. I, I, I'll muster up something for him." Right. You know, you know how people rush and put things together mm -hmm. and not really have a, a lot of thought on what they're doing, but they want to bring something. So what he did, he said, okay, let me muster up something. I got I got a little something. Mm -hmm. And then he brought it to the Lord. Yeah. The Lord did not like that. He said, I don't want your sloppy seconds. Yeah. I don't want you didn't even think of, did you even think about me? You were really thinking about yourself when he brought that. So that's the thing that we have to do to the Lord. We we have to give him our all, and that means it's the best. That means that we gotta cut him off at the we have to give him the things that's on the top first and not try to give him the things that's all the way in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, is, I think you talked about this before. You talked about that first batch of cookies. Uh -huh. Are you willing to give the Lord your first batch of cookies? Yeah. Which is usually the best yeah. batch. Yeah. It's so fresh. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to give him the stale cookies that's been sitting out for three days? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, it's important. Does he have our all? Um, and a lot of, in that story, a lot of um, theologians have talked about that over the years. Because the Bible does not really go in detail as to why he accepted one offering and why not the other. And it says that uh, as you have read it, it talks about how uh, Cain gave from the, the, the things of the ground and, and um, Abel gave this good part of this uh, meat and different things here. And so uh, a lot of people surmise that's what it was. He gave the good fat part and he took time and into it where he just said, oh, you know, here you go. Uh, give God an offer. 
be the, you know, whatever he could find. And Abel took time and said, give God, give God an offering? Well, I got to give him the best. So I'm not going to give him some rotted meat or spotted meat or anything with blemish. I want to give him the best. I want to take time. You, you ever been to, uh, you can go to a restaurant sometime and the uh, they can bring it out to you and you will look at it and say, what is this? What is this? You can go to the rest of the same restaurant again, or just let's say, let me, let me back up. You can go to a restaurant and it can be the best presentation you ever saw. They got the little garnishes on there, you know, sprinkled the little drizzle or whatever you want on there, and it just looks beautiful. And then you can go to the same restaurant again on a different day, and they can bring out the same thing, and it does not look the same. You almost don't even recognize it. And you say, what is this? And they'll tell you, and what threw you off is that the presentation. How did that happen? How's that happen? A lot of times, you know, if you if you go out a lot, there's a different cook. It's a different cook. It don't even taste the same. It's not the same. Someone else cooked it and did not give it that kind of care. You know that some people, when they cook, they cook with care. I was just, um, they cook with care, they cook with, they put love into it, and they, they are, um, it's important that how they present it. it. It's important that it looks right to the person. I see people post things online all the time, different cakes and different meals and everything, and they're trying to sell it, and you're looking at it, and you say, well, they're going to need a lot of prayer for that business, God, <laughs> because of presentation. Then you have people who present things, and it looks marvelous. Some, in some cases, it may not even taste that good, but the presentation, it looked marvelous. It makes me want to buy it. You know, those commercials, uh, these fast food commercials, and even restaurants, they pay people to professionals to come in and make sure that when they present it on TV, it looks beautiful. It, it, it catches your eye to make you want to get it. When you go to a restaurant, in most cases, it don't look the same. When they give it to you, it don't look like it looked on the picture up there. They paid someone to make the presentation well. And here you have Abel uh, presentation, time. As Sister Victoria said, the, the intention of the heart. God may have looked and saw the intent of the heart. He wanted to give me his best where he just put something together. Just here, here you go. You know, just looked around on the ground, just whatever you could find, just presented that before uh, the Lord. And I, I, I agree. I do believe that was the decide. That was the thing that divided them in, re in in regards to how God accepted one and not the other. Um, I remember uh, a couple weeks ago. Actually, I was just listening to the audio uh, back to some messages. And I, uh, as Sister Victoria was saying that she had a catering business, she cooked, she made cakes, and one of the things that she said in there is that the time spent, she prayed over these cakes, and she was preparing these cakes for someone that's getting married. She's praying over the cake. Now, ain't this, that's the cake I want. You get what I'm saying? That someone's praying over that, the food before they present it, to know that, that that's the love that they put into that. I, I, I would like to patronize that business. You know what I'm saying? To know that. Some people don't care. It's just about money. It's about money. This uh, high production, push it out. We don't even care. As long as they buy it, you know, who cares? So, to give God your all, one of the aspects of giving God our all is giving God our best. Giving Him our best. Um, to give Him our best. 
And going back to, let me just read this definition real quick and I want to say something else. Uh, all is, I thought about the word whole, W-H-O-L-E. Uh, and it means, one of the definitions, all of or entire, entire. Um, all of something is another definition. So all of or entire. So everything, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. Um, when I asked the question a few minutes ago, when I said, um, do we say that, Lord, you could have this portion, but not this portion. We don't say it, but it's just like Sister Victoria said, he knows our heart, the intentions of our heart. So uh, we're not saying it, but our actions are showing it. And it's in our heart. The Lord sees our heart. And he sees that this person, this individual, is not giving me their all. They're not giving me everything. I don't have all of them. I don't have them as a whole. I have a portion of them, but not as a whole. How does that happen? That God does not have us as a whole. How does that happen? What part doesn't he have? Do we know? If God does not have all of us, what part doesn't he have? What part does he have? It changes. It varies. You want to say something? As you're speaking, the Holy Spirit is just kind of like convicting me. Um, I can sincerely say, as regards to my finances, um, He doesn't have my all. Um, I remember earlier this year when the Lord just placed it on my heart that there's an elderly woman that every month I have to write a card just to send it to her and put $20 not just send the card to check on her, um, but put $20 on behalf of Irving because she really took very good care of her Irving. Mm -hmm. And um, where she's living now, the um, granddaughter really doesn't want visitors. And we used to go every Thursday. I remember the Lord placing it on my heart that I needed to do that. I did it once mm -hmm. and then I defaulted. And when you keep asking the question, does he have your all? For me, I rationalize. Yeah. And I say, huh. And the devil has a way of um, you playing on the mind. It's when you give that money that the following day you, you find a need for that money. That the devil will say, oh, you could have showed that if you had kept that, now you see. You needed to buy that book now, and it's exactly that $20 that you left. So it's something to overcome. And it's like, do you trust the Lord implicitly like Abraham did? We are even when God told Abraham, take your child, yes. your only child, your beloved child, yes. and sacrifice him on the altar. He didn't even think twice. Mm -hmm. He obeyed. Um, my prayer is I get to that level where um, he can have control over everything, where nothing would be of so much significance in my life that I'll be having like palpitations that, oh, because the God we serve is a God that owns all the cows on the mountains, everything. He has it all. He has more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. So for us to get to that point where even when he says, take everything you have in the back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, sometimes he will give that because he's setting you up for blessing. Yeah. Yeah. When he does that, but can we implicitly like trust in him so much and know he's the one, yeah. you know, giving that instruction and it's because he has something bigger for you. Yes. So for me to get to that point where I can rest and not have facultations, I don't think I've gotten there. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's a good point. She talked about finances and made a good point. Here you have, going back to Abraham, the Lord told him to sacrifice his son. He does it, as we talked about this a couple weeks ago, without thinking twice. And one of the things that was pointed out is it says that he rolled, he told me at night, and as we were pointing out a couple weeks ago, he rose up and says early in the morning. He didn't sleep in. He didn't try to say, I ain't gonna set my clock because if I oversleep, it, it is what it is. He it says he, of course, y'all know he didn't have clocks. But anyhow, they had different, they told the time a different way. But anyhow, so he rose up early and began setting out to do what God said to do. That's his son. She said something important. The Lord says, everything you have in the bank, I want you to give it away. <laughs> you can hear a pin dry. I heard the thing on the clock tick. <laughs> Give it away. Give it away. I got something better for you. Now, we don't see that better. And you don't know what that better is. But he says, take it all and give it away. You just opened up something even bigger than where I was going. <laughs> that just, I think everybody on that stance will have to question, does God have my all? From the stance of like Abraham, where of course he told Abraham, if he told Abraham to do that, okay, Abraham, I've now blessed you. First of all, he told him, leave all your family. Leave everything that you know, leave. He didn't question, he left. And then as you see the different things um, throughout that journey, one of the major uh, milestones there again was that his son, that he blessed him with. Now I want you to sacrifice. So he went from there to the son, to, to the, there leaving his town, leaving his kinfolk, everyone, in, everything in between to the son. You got to know that he would have done it without thinking twice. He said, everything that you got, I want you to give it away because I'm going to bless you with greater. Why was it so easy for him to do that? Why was it so easy? Why would it have been so easy for him to do that if he said everything that you got, give it away? Now, let's put this after. Let's put this after Isaac. Why would he, um, why would it have been so easy for him to do that without even flinching? Everything I got, give it away, no problem. Why would it so easy? He's seen God do it before. He had developed a, a very special and intimate relationship with God. So, the first, to leave your family, the familiar, what you're comfortable with, yeah. and to go somewhere. He said, go to a place where I'll show you. He didn't even tell him where to go. He didn't tell him where to go. So, he walked in blindly mm -hmm. by faith, not by what he sees. Because sometimes, if we, if God said, leave your job, wait a minute, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to leave his family, but then, and for some of us, it'll be easy to leave our family. Mm -hmm. Ain't no good for us to do it, you know, but leave your family, that was a test he left. Mm -hmm. Then he got his son, the son that was the promised son. Mm -hmm. We 
we got parents in here. Our kids, like, you might say stuff about me and try to tell me, but my baby, <laughs> you know, still gonna bring out a whole different, you don't wanna see that side. Uh -huh. But he was willing to sacrifice his son, uh -huh. I promise. Uh -huh. And I think that, that alone right here, forget about the family. Uh -huh. If he was willing to sacrifice his son uh -huh. for God, I believe whatever, no matter how much he had, he'd have said here. Uh -huh. Because this is this is this like this is a love that people if you don't have one, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not even saying that you are, but I didn't know what love was until she came. Okay. And even before she was birthed, I fell in love with her while she was still in the womb. So you know what I'm saying? Like like if I say, okay, here God, you can have her. Then yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like if we've had that relationship, he said, I was about to kill my son for God. Mm -hmm. Everything else is like, don't nothing else, this is my son. Yeah. Like you could I said this yesterday and I'm you know what I'm saying, I wrap it up. The love that I have for her, you could come to me and say, I'll give you a billion dollars if you give me my baby. Keep that million dollars. Uh, I, I hear you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a love that, you know what I'm saying? I can't get this love back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think you'd have been like, listen, whatever you want, you can have. Mm -hmm. He was willing to give up Isaac. Yeah. Almost did it. And he said, okay, no, 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 stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're serious about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His heart was in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tough when you when we compare ourselves to when we measure ourselves up to him. I don't think any of us could say. I mean, we're. Just, let's just focus on the children alone. Who's willing to do that? That's all on another level. They were he was at all on a whole other level. God, you have my all. On a whole level that we, I don't think any of us have reached <laughs> yet. When you talk, when you put it in that perspective, um, it made me go there. Let me just let me read Genesis chapter twelve. Can we go there real quick? Genesis chapter twelve. Does God have your all today? Does He have you in your entirety? Okay, Genesis 12, starting at 1, everybody there? Okay, it says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I'm at verse 2 now. It says, And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whom... And in him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, verse four. So he tells him this. Verse four says, so Abraham went as the Lord told him. There's nothing in between here that says he thought about it. He questioned, uh, you know, he, he wanted to tie up loose ends first. It just says, so Abraham went as the Lord told him and Lot went with him. Um, I'm, I'm saying Abraham, but that's, of course, before it was Abram. Now, what's significant here it says that he was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. 75, that's a, that's a, a, a blessed age. And most 75-year-olds are set in their ways, in a lot of cases, not open for change. You know, even though they lived a lot longer back then, you know, that 75, I'm assuming, would have been, you know, today's 25, but uh, it says, uh, Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot's brother's son, and all their possessions they had, and gathered, and the people that they uh, had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abraham passed through the land uh, to the place of Shechem to the oak of Moriah at the time the Canaanites were in the land. Verse 7, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar uh, to the Lord who had appeared to him. 
Now, here he's just moving. It's just like Floyd said. At this point, he really don't know where he's going. He didn't ask where, where he was going, but yet he went. It's safe to say, God, for, for Abram, Abraham, God had all of him. As we read the rest of his life, as some of you already have read, God had all of him. There's no question about it. So does he have all of us? Now let me go back to uh, Victoria's, Sister Victoria's statement here. Finances. For some, it's the finances. We don't trust God enough to make a way. So we hold everything that we have. He may say give. Nope. I need this because I'm not sure of what's to come. So let me let me hold this. Help someone. No. Nope. Mm -mm. This might be my, I don't know where my next going to come from. So I'm just going to hold this. And what are we doing at that time? We're holding our blessings. The Lord said it, but yet we still hold it. And what that also shows is our lack of trust to him. We're not trusting the Jehovah Jireh side of God. The one who is our provider. The El Shaddai, the one who's all sufficient, more than enough. We don't trust that side of him. That's what they're saying. I'm holding it, and that's showing that I don't truly trust him. So there's an area that he don't have all of me in. I'm holding it because I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he can make a way. And I remember uh, I told a story before. Some of you heard it. I was um, at church, and uh, my time was... Uh, $50. I've, I had to give $50 that particular Sunday. It was my time. I had set aside. Now I'm at church. It's offering time. Now I'm, I'm contemplating if I should give this tithe in the offering. And the, me and the Lord had a conversation right there. And then we, we, we had this dispute right here in the seat <laughs> as the ushers are coming around. And I'm saying, Lord, this all, if I give this, this is all, this is all, I said, if I, I said, this is all I got. If I give this, I'm not going to have anything to get me through the week. And he says, you're right. If you don't give that, if you keep it, that is all you'll have. That's what he said. He said, that is all you'll have. If you keep it, that is all you'll have. So I hear that statement. I step out on faith. I give it. It was his anyway. I'm trying to keep it. You know? So, I give it, stepped out on faith, walk away from that altar with nothing but pocket land. I may have had some coins laying around the house, you know, that I could have got a little Debbie snack cake with or something, you know, at the time. Throughout that week, get a call for some business, couple of apartments that we uh, that came to us at the time we were doing apartment turnover cleaning so people move out we get them ready to, apartments ready to move back in that was more than that fifty dollars way more than that fifty dollars you know what I'm saying now had I not did that the doors the, the heavens would have been closed I'm not being obedient to what what God was saying he showed me right then I made that fifty dollars back and more, triple, more than that fifty dollars would have sustained. I was able to make that money back. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes it's just he's trying to see, do I have it? these April? Those were tests to see how much of him do I have. And when he found out, I have all of you. The blessings flow. They all flow. Our is our lack of giving God our all, holding back what God has for us. Think about that. The things that we pray for, the things that we are praying for, the things that we have before the Lord, is us not giving God our all, holding back what God showed us, the visions, the blessings, the things that's to come. Is that holding back what God has for us? And the answer is yes. 
God don't have us all. It's hindering us. Because he can't do all that he wants to do because he don't have all of us. Yes, sir. You get this. And um, as I, I remember a while back, we, we were kind of discussing, we were talking about the Abraham thing too. Mm -hmm. The, you know, and you mentioned today, you know, he he was he was on a different level. His his faith level was was just it was extreme. It was big. He he didn't have that little faith, mm -mm. you know, that Jesus was responding to a yeah. particular person about it. He had the big faith. Yeah. And the thing about it is, um, I remember we kind of had this discussion before, but he stuck to what God had told him in the beginning. And what he told, you know, what the angel had told the wife, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yeah. you going to have a son. Yeah. And Abraham took through that son, your seed will be blessed and it's going to be, it's going to expand. Mm -hmm. So he probably did make up in his mind, like, okay, I'm going to trust the Lord. I've been trusting him this far. So if he tells me to sacrifice him, he can raise him from the dead mm -hmm. and yeah. still live. Yeah. You know, I mean, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, raised Christ <laughs> from the dead yeah. after they killed him. Yeah. So you think about that fact. Whatever would have happened, God already made up in his mind that through that seed, that child, the child that it took so long to get, <laughs> the only child with your wife so-called being barren, and her womb was shut up, basically. Yeah. It, see, the thing about it is that, ooh, think about it. Her womb was shut up because of God. It was a particular time frame that she was supposed to have that child. So she had that child. But the, the thing that really is getting me is that if he had killed them, it would have still been obedient. And the Lord would probably just raise them <laughs> because that was the child already. It, it wasn't no other way around it. God had already made up his mind about his future. Yeah. So he yeah. would have raised them from the dead, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing about his wife, Sarah, being barren, which when it showed God, when it showed, should show us is that God can surpass any kind of human logic, any kind of human issues. So anything that's natural here or that's common to us, she said, I'm well beyond my years. I'm past the point of having kids. God said, that's no problem. Still on. I'm still gonna bless you. I'm still gonna make a way. And so sometimes we get to the place where we say, well God, what about this? And God, what about that? I can't do this. This can't happen. This it can't happen this way. We 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 missing who we talking to. We missing the whole concept of who we serve and, and who's who's the head, who sits high, who's looking. You know what I'm saying? We 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 are we we don't we don't we don't we're not grasping the whole the entire thing of who are we talking to. He can do everything and anything. So when we say we can't. He can. And above all that we can ask or think. We serve a great God. So you see, here she said, uh-uh. And God said, yes, yes. She said, uh-uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Must be this way. No, it don't. It means exactly what I said. It means it's going to happen exactly the way that I said it's going to happen. Uh, so uh, that to put us in a place where we able, sometimes we talk about now finances, sometimes it's our trust. Here, that's a great example. It leads us right to the fact where she did not trust the provisions of God, how he can do it, how he can make a way, and sometimes that's us too. We don't trust. He said he's going to do it this way, 
God, you had to have meant for me to go get along. He says, no, I don't want you to get along. I'm going to make a way for you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to cause someone to come and bless you. God, no, you, someone to come and bless me, you must mean the, the long person at the back. God said, no. You see, that won't make a way for you. We don't wait. We go, and I call it uh, the Ishmael blessings versus the Isaac blessings. Ishmael represents doing on your own strength, your way, your own logic. And Isaac is waiting for the promise of God. And a lot of us have went out at times and got Ishmael blessings versus Isaac's. And then what happens? There's toil with that. There's uh, sorrow with that. There's strain, stress with that. Going out to do it on our own, we get tired, we tire ourselves out. And God was saying, all I want you to do is wait. We create more problems. Did not problems come from Ishmael? The, the, of that whole situation? Uh, so we create things that now we have to now go back and now fix, adjust. When God was saying, I wanted to bless you smooth where there will be no interest. There will be no way to have to pay it back. There will be no way to uh, have to go back and clean it up. So sometimes we just got to wait. So sometimes we don't have all of our trust. Yeah, Janet. Yeah, I see. We've been talking and just hearing in my spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit telling me in this kingdom, you are not in Victoria for the custodian. Mm, okay. You are not the owner of ah. anything. Mm. When you're claiming your right as the owner, you become like Lucifer that wanted um, to be like God. Yes. Yes. So, Victoria, if you see yourself as a custodian, it will make everything easier for you in your mind. So you don't have to claim ownership over anything, be it your child, be it your marriage, be it your finances, be it your anything. See yourself as a custodian for a while. And as a custodian, manage it the best way you know how to manage it with the help of God, giving you the instructions and be obedient, trust, and just obey. Yeah. And see me walk in your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God, none of this belongs to me. It all belongs to you. I think uh, when we take on, we have that mentality, the Lord, the Lord, my family is not mine. They belong to you. You know, because sometimes we have family issues and we will try to work it out. We try to make a way before giving it to God. Now, he'll sometimes, of course, use us to uh, to be the light in that situation. You know, he'll give us the wisdom to implement things in that situation. But at the end, uh, as I said at the beginning, he's the one that you want to give it to. Otherwise, we tire ourselves out trying to work the situation. Now, Lord, I give these uh, family members to you. I give the situation to you. I give them to you, Lord. I give uh, my kids to you. I give my wife to you. I give my husband to you. Whatever it is, I give it to you. I give my siblings to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, everything, though. We, we need to give everything to God and uh, in every aspect of our life. Lord, you work it out. My finances. My health, try and work it out on our own. You'll give us what we need to do for health, but yet we still have to give it to him. You know what I'm saying? Everything has to belong to God. Now, I'm going to, 
Uh, let me read this last scripture and then I'm going to stop here and pick it, pick it up next week. Uh, let's go to Mark. I want to go a little further. I'll, I'll go a little further with it next week. Mark chapter 12. scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well asked him which commandment is the most important of all Jesus Jesus uh, said Jesus answered the most important hero Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one and you shall love the Lord uh, your God with all your heart with all your heart everything and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, everything that's in you, you every all of your heart. That's another thing. God don't have all of our heart. For some, we talk about all. For, for some, He does not have all of your heart. Everything, all my emotions, every. Thing that's in me, God does not have all of me. I don't have all my heart. Because why? How do you how how do we know God does not have all of your heart, of an individual's heart? Because peace in your heart is somewhere else. Now, should your heart be divided? Last question, I'm gonna cut off. Should your heart be divided? Is it enough in your heart to divvy it up? Because shouldn't, shouldn't your loved ones have some of your heart too? What does, that, what does the scripture even mean then? Should, shouldn't others have your heart too? See, this is the thing that I have realized um, a while ago. I got this revelation, you know, a while back. And with you doing this with the Lord, with the Lord, you automatically internal everything else around you is covered already. Um. <laughs> because if you're loving the Lord with all thy heart. If you're even, uh, you know, doing the commandments, you're, you're loving your God <laughs> and loving your neighbor, and you know you're 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 completing you're completing all you know everything that you needed just within two things: loving your God with all your heart, your mind, your, your strength, and everything. And then you're loving your neighbor as you love yourself. It covers everything with that mm -hmm. because you put God first. When you put God first and you cherish Him, it reflects on the other people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is why um, um, you 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 can say some people have that glow mm -hmm. and they're always happy and they're treating others others right because they have a good relationship with the Father. They have a good relationship. When you have a good relationship with the Father, yeah. it affects how you treat your family members and everybody else. Yes, yes, yes. So um, my relationship with God actually is the reason why I treat people the way I treat them today. Because I decided to put God on that forefront, uh -huh. it's a reason why I'm a much nicer person. Okay. It's the reason why <laughs> I no longer steal. Okay. It's the reason why I... No, uh, no longer lie yeah. or hurt people's feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, oh, no, that's not right, God. I can't do that. Yeah. Or when I when I make a when when whenever if I make a mistake, 
I go back and apologize if the Holy Spirit tells me. Uh -huh. I only do that because of the relationship I have with the Father. Gotcha. So in, in turn, with me having put the Father first, everything else is covered mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. If I didn't put God in the place that he's in in my life, everything else wouldn't be covered. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Good point. Amen. All right. Good, good. Yes, sir. I agree. Um, because God has my heart, it affects everything else is what he was saying. No, I was going to say it trickles down. Uh, and then the Bible talks about how um, love covers the multitude of sin. So mm -hmm. anything that's, you know, in the dark or anything that's not in the light, eventually that love will trickle down. To um, everyone else and whoever else, you know, they may able to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to park it right here. We come back next week. I want to dive more into our whole heart, God having our whole heart, uh, the question that I had. So, should He have? Uh, should others have a piece of our heart too? Uh, let's let's say a lot on that. Let's pause and think about that, and we'll pick it up next week. Uh, and I want to also go further into some of the areas that he may not have uh, all of us in. We'll discuss that uh, further next week. Um, so let's, as we go forth uh, in the week, we'll just, uh, let's keep that, keep all that in mind. And let's examine ourselves too. And if he does not have all of us, let's begin to work on that uh, throughout the week. Amen. Um, did anyone who came for prayer? pray. Father, I thank you for just who you are, Lord. I give you all praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise, oh God. We lift you high, Lord. You are magnified. You are glorified. Oh God, there's none like you, none before you, and none after you. Lord, we just say continue to have your way, oh God. Forgive us if there's been times, oh God, where you did not have all of us Lord, forgive us and show us, oh God, the areas that we still need to work on, Lord. Show us the areas, Lord, where we don't have all of us, Lord. And we say, Lord, we will work on them, Lord. We will give you our all, Lord. We will give you our all because you are our everything. We will give you our all. We don't want to have anything that we're holding back from you, Lord. We want to give you our all. We want to give you our all. Lord, we give you all honor and praise just for who you are, what you're doing in our lives. We give you honor and praise, Lord. Honor and praise belongs to you. We give it to you now. We give it to you now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.